Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in the last days the book of daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase daniel 12 4 but you daniel shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase knowledge is increasing rapidly in accordance with daniel's prophecy events are happening faster than we can process them yet nothing startles or amazes us much anymore in our time, the time of the end, we are witnessing the technology that will bring about the end of days climaxing in the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Revelation 13:15. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. What is the image of the beast? And how does the false prophet make an image that can be seen worldwide so that all people can worship it? The Bible does not provide many details concerning what this image of the beast is. We know this, however. The false prophet will have power to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image could speak. This breathing, speaking image of the beast will then demand worship. Anyone who refuses to worship the image of the beast will be killed. The method of execution for those who do not worship the image of the beast is beheading, as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus, and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. It is likely that the image of the beast is the abomination that causes desolation in the rebuilt Jewish temple mentioned in Matthew 24, 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. The Apostle Paul further clarifies what the abomination of desolation is in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, who, the Antichrist, opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. What exactly is the makeup of the image of the beast, and how will people from all over the world worship it? The Bible does not say. The old speculation is that the image of the beast is a statue given the appearance of life. But with the rise of new technologies come new theories, including a fully immersive online realm that looks similar to the real world, but is computer generated. First look at that brand new Apple device. I think few people are talking about it. It is called Apple Vision Pro. It involves a term you may not be familiar with, spatial computing. And yes, I had the opportunity to experience it firsthand. It's the unveiling of Apple's next chapter. Introducing Apple Vision Pro. CEO Tim Cook announcing Apple Vision Pro, their most ambitious product to date. With Vision Pro, you're no longer limited by a display. Your surroundings become an infinite canvas. There was so much speculation what was going to be happening today and what the Vision Pro would look like. What do you think is the biggest surprise to folks? Probably to the magnitude of what it does. Yeah. And it'll do anything that your Mac or iPhone can do and more. Here at Apple Park in Northern California. Oh, yeah. Apple inviting me to experience a first-hand film look at the device. They have the complete control over it. Wow. It's emerging and evolving technology that blends digital content with a physical world, controlled primarily by your eyes, hands, and voice. No remote needed. First, an opportunity to transport around the world. Oh, <laughs> it's like I'm in Oregon, right there. Then coming face to face with in-depth memories. I felt like I'm at the birthday party. Moments nearly impossible to fully capture on a 2D screen, like this mindful minute. I would live here. 
this is why <laughs> for that alone oh my goodness that was and I'm someone who meditates and I found something new in that moment giving consumers a new immersive entertainment experience oh. <laughs> And despite all its power, the device surprisingly it lightweight. It was comfortable. I didn't feel, didn't feel the heat. As the dispensation of the church age closes, the Antichrist, phony signs, miracles, and lying wonders are on the way. I hope you are truly aware, awake, and understand the times we live in. This is the end times prophecy the Bible warned us about, and it's happening right before our very eyes. Imagine a world where you can be all-powerful all-knowing and present everywhere. This will be Satan's realm, where every kind of evil will run unchecked. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. Satan, in sharp contrast, does not reflect these divine attributes. Satan is very powerful, more than any man, and more powerful than most angels. Satan wants to be like God, and even exalts himself above God, as we read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan is not anywhere near to being equal with God. The only way Satan can be all-powerful, all-knowing, and present everywhere at once is through technology. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, he will undoubtedly use this type of technology as part of the beast system. Tim was there to greet me right after. I need the emoji, mind blown. <laughs> this is what you see from me right now. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful object. The real thing, of course, that it does is enable you to see, hear, and interact with digital content right in your physical space as if it's there. That's spatial computing. And it is a big idea. Apple welcoming in a new era of spatial computing. You can immerse yourself in movies, TV shows, sports, and feel like you're right there. You can take photos and videos and then enjoy those and bring back memories as if you were there. It's not about one thing. It's a, it is a platform. And so we can't wait to unleash it to the developers so they can begin to work on applications for it. Great potential at work, home, and at play. ABC News parent company Disney jumping in with ideas of how to use it. But there are questions. There are some folks who worry about isolation, yes. that it will cause you to be more isolated. Have you addressed that? It's a major point that, that was a design point of ours from the start. We, this is not about isolation. This is about connection. This is about having people there that feel like they're there with you. When you talk about tech, of course, people want to know how much. It'll cost $34.99, and it'll be available early next year. It's the most advanced piece of electronics equipment out there. It's tomorrow's engineering today. So you're going to live in the future and you're gonna do it today. Do you think this is something that the average person will be able to afford? I don't know. I think people will make different choices depending upon their current financial situation mm -hmm. and so forth. The engineering and depth of engineering in it is mind blowing. You've got more than a 4K experience in each eye. And of course, it doesn't come for free. It, it costs right. something to do that. But I think it's a great value. What do you think you're gonna use it for if you used it? If I used it, um, I wouldn't use it for, I, I would use it. The, med the meditation part of it was just, I, I, mm -hmm. we both yeah. meditate, was fascinating. The immersion, because I'm away from my family, to be able to actually feel, like if some can't come to the wedding, to be able mm -hmm. to take that and they can feel like they're there. That's interesting. Yeah, but, uh, I, but it's, it's, it, it was an incredible experience uh, with all that I saw. And I, I kept thinking about the endless possibilities and opportunities for this technology. Along with worshiping the image of the beast, the false prophet will require everyone in the world to receive a mark pledging allegiance to the Antichrist, as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. 
He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Whatever the image and the mark of the beast are, they will be the focal point of worship in the religion of the beast during the second half of the tribulation. Praising the image of the beast is how the deceived people of the world will worship the man of lawlessness, who sets himself up as God in the coming rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. Those who do not worship the image of the beast will suffer the wrath of the Antichrist. But those who do worship the image of the beast will suffer the wrath of God, which is far worse, as we read in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at the worshippers of the image of the beast, as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Those who refuse to bow a knee to the Antichrist and the image of the beast may be persecuted on earth, but they will be rewarded in heaven, as we read in Revelation 15one through 4 Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingle with fire. And those who had the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. The image of the beast is front and center in Satan's kingdom on earth, but it will not last. The Bible specifies 42 months, or three and a half years, that the Antichrist will have worldwide influence, as we read in Revelation 13, 5 through 8. And he, the Antichrist, was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Notice it was given to him and granted to him to do these things. God is sovereign, and the Antichrist, who at this time is indwelt by Satan, has no power except what is given or granted by God. The image of the beast will be destroyed. The two beasts, the false prophet and the Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire, as we read in Revelation 19, 19 and 20. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Satan will join the false prophet and the Antichrist, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. After this, the Lord Jesus will establish his unending kingdom of perfection, as we read in Luke 1.32 and 33. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. If we are seeing the technology for the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, how close are we getting to the Antichrist coming on the scene and forcing the world to worship him and take his mark? Where am I? Well, it's a little bit like heaven, only better. Daddy, Daddy, we miss you, Daddy, we miss you. Please, thoughts can be with us today. Now all you have to do is give me your pledge of allegiance and everything you've ever dreamed of 
be ours. I would rather believe in a creator who would die for his creation than have his creation die for him. My son. I am not your son, Satan. And they are not my family. So be it. You've made your choice. Not even your god can save you. He already is. The day of wonders. You make the world worship you or die. Pretty soon, everything, this whole earth, will be mine. And there's no reason for God to come back. Now is there? Once they give me the Pledge of Allegiance, they will be mine for eternity. And those that aren't are dead. Lord, I didn't honor you as my life. By your grace, may I do so in death. Very touching. Goodbye, Thorough Stone. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? His appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.